Heyo, duckies, Andy here, and today we're looking at how I do the zoom and follow mouse that I do on every single YouTube video, but this one is with a little twist. So this is a new uh, script that has been brought out, and you don't have to worry about installing Python or anything like that. So if you guys have been struggling using this script, this is the one for you. So it is called Zoom to Mouse, which is, I mean, that's pretty fitting title. And I'm using it right now and it is silky smooth. It's so easy to get installed. Just hit go to download and it'll take you over to the GitHub page of uh, blank source code. Uh, this person has been incredible. I've been working by asking them to add some other features and different things like that to improve your guys experience with it. So if you do have any feedback, please let the dev know. And to install it and download it, we just go and click where it says OBS zoom to mouse.lua and it'll bring up all the code. Don't worry, you don't need to know anything about that. You just head up here to this download raw file button, which will just be showcased there. This little download button uh, and that'll download to your kind of main downloads folder. If you can't see that for any reason, then you probably need to make sure you sign in to GitHub. You can create an account for free. It's super easy to do, and then you're all good to go. So now we're in OBS, and you can see I've got my to-do list here uh, and all that jazz, which you, yeah. If you want to see what I'm up to, then come and visit me at twitch.tv forward slash Andy Lippy. I even live stream now on YouTube too, so definitely stick out for some of them. So getting this to work, it works with any source now, but the best ones to use are display capture sources. You just go up to tools and you go down to scripts and then under the scripts section, we're just gonna press this plus sign. This will open where all your scripts are located in OBS. Jump to your downloads folder and we're gonna copy that script and paste it into this folder. Just makes it a lot easier for you to keep everything organized. And if you accidentally move this script after installing it, it won't break it, okay? So it's this OBS zoom to mouse LUA and you're going to open that and we get a ton of options just here on the right. So the zoom source, this is the source that you want to zoom in on. So it's going to be display capture. As you can see, this is a display capture source and it's capturing my second monitor. This down here, don't worry about this. This is a preview so I can actually see uh, what I'm actually recording in OBS. Just so, yeah, it gets a little bit com complicated. Don't worry. Uh, so inside of this script location here, you can refresh the zoom sources. So if there's any like issues or anything like that, you can refresh it. Uh, you can force, well, it says if you highlight over these, they've added tool tips, which is lovely. So click to refresh the internal zoom data. So it, if you've changed the, the source yourself manually, this will refresh that basically. So zoom factor is how much you want to zoom in by. And you can see we're not actually zooming in. So the best thing to do is set up a hotkey first. So we're going to go up to file and go to settings and go to hotkeys. Down at the bottom, we should see a toggle zoom to mouse. I'm going to press number one for that and number two for the toggle follow mouse during zoom. So this is up to you what hotkey you want to use there. I'm just going to use one and two for this example and press apply. So if I press number one, it'll zoom in to wherever my mouse is on screen. Every time I press number one, it'll zoom to wherever the mouse is. If I press one, then number two, this will actually start tracking my mouse as well. So it might not work straight away. There we go, it's clicked in now. So sometimes it takes a little wiggle of your mouse to get it to, to work, and it can all depend on the settings that we're about to adjust as well. So if I zoom back out of that and jump in here, if I change this factor to let's say five, for instance, we can actually zoom in five times as much. So press number one to zoom in, boom, it's huge. And you can see it's quite snappy and that's absolutely normal. This is where we need to tinker about with these settings. So we've got the zoom speed. If we set that to 0 0.01 and press number one, you'll see it takes a while for it to zoom in. If we crank it all the way to the top, it'll be insta zoom. So if you want to just emphasize a point on screen really quick, be like, bam, bam, done. I really like the smooth zoom. Auto follow mouse means that when you zoom in, it will automatically start following the mouse. You don't need to worry about setting up that second hotkey because this will automatically trigger it. I'm going to go back to um, a lower zoom. So we'll just do three for now to make it a little bit easy. Follow outside bounds. When this is selected and you zoom in and you move your cursor off screen. So now it's on the left monitor, as you can see, 
it is still tracking my mouse. So I can move the preview window up and down, as you can see, but I can't move it left and right until I go back onto that screen. So if I turn that off again, just here, so I turned it off and I'll go back to the previous monitor. You can see now it's not tracking it up and down in that preview window. So that's quite handy if you've got multiple monitors and you want to keep track. Follow speed, this pretty much does what it says on tin. If I zoom in and put the follow speed, you can see it's now taking a while to move to where the cursor is. So you get some really smooth effects. I like it to be quite rapid. So when I'm putting the track on, might take a second for it to just reset the settings. Just give it a second. Oop. Let me just change that a little bit. Sometimes they can be a little bit finicky, these scripts. Uh, let me just press re. Oh, there we I've been. I've changed the zoom speed. You, you silly boy. You silly boy. Press the wrong button. Now you'll see if I zoom in, it will be literally like insta locked. But you'll notice it gets a little bit janky like that. That's completely normal. We need to adjust the border size. So if I set the border size to maximum, it means that it's going to be like looking a long way around and basically trying to anchor that point in um, really into the middle. So you can see now, check that out. That mouse is literally just anchored into the middle of the screen until it goes to the edges of the display. So I really, really like this. So I always know what I'm showcasing on screen. It's great. And the lock sensitivity as well, that's for if you're messing around with the follow border size, but don't worry. Uh, allow any source of zoom is quite interesting. So if you guys are not using a nested scene, so if I create another scene here and we'll call it scene two, and inside scene two, I've got actually got scene one, which sceneception, you know how it works, it's the same thing here. If I zoom in, it might not work, as you can see. Let me just refresh the zoom sources. Oh, there we go. So I just realized what I did. When you add that scene, you need to just make sure you change scene and change scene back again. So I've got the initial display capture here. And on scene two, I've got scene which has got that display capture in. But now the zoom still works on it. This method will not work for source clone or something like that because you will need to set up a different section by pressing the allow any zoom source. So technically you can grab any source. So if I just created, I don't know, a, uh, we'll get an image for instance, and I'll stick an image in here, just really random image. Uh, what have I got on the PC? Here's a screenshot of me as the moon, which looks lovely. If I refresh um, this scene by just changing scene, changing back again, we'll get the image source there. So now if I press zoom in, it's still trying to track where my mouse is, but it's zooming in on that image. So this can get so powerful. When you are using this though, there is a tool tip here that says you must manually select the source position uh, for non-display. So jumping in here, you can set all of these settings to make sure it matches that source uh, and everything like that. So now when I'm moving this mouse around, I can move this source and zoom in on it, which is just unbelievably powerful. And it literally is that easy to set up and use. It's it's mind boggling how much easier it is than the Python method. If there are any features you'd like to see, then let the dev know over on GitHub. They have been so responsive and just answering all my questions. And a lot of these features weren't in it two days ago, but they are now and it's crazy. So great job to you, dude. Thank you so much for, for adding this to the community. If this video helped you, make sure you like it, you know, subscribe, help me get to that 25K before the end of the year. And I will see you in the next video. Put your rock over the stone.